Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I'm going to show you how to make a plaid pattern inside of Photoshop. This is a super simple tutorial and it'll take just a few minutes, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start off with a new document. We're going to come here to File, New, and I'm going to set this one up at 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels. I'm going to set my resolution to 300 and I'm going to go ahead and click Create. Let me open up my layers here. I'm going to go ahead and unlock this layer and then I'm going to come over here to my gradient tool. If you don't have this showing here, uh, you might have it down here. Let's just go ahead and uh, click and hold that down and then you'll see a whole menu of other tools that you have just in case you don't have this set up the way I do. So I'm going to go ahead and click that gradient tool and you'll see that once I click that I get a whole set of options up here. So to make the plaid, these are going to be the settings that we'll use. We're going to set this to linear gradient. Our mode is going to be normal and we're going to set our opacity to 50%. We have dither and transparency checked off. Now I'm going to go ahead and click here. So you'll see that I have this gradient that has all of these lines in it. Now typically what you're going to see is something like this. So you'll see a solid gradient. That's what you see default inside of Photoshop. So we're going to just go ahead and go back to noise. I've set my roughness to 75%. And you can make some adjustments here in this section for the color. You can choose RGB and then select how much red you want in this, how much green is going to show up here, uh, and then just move these around like this if you would like to do that. Um, I prefer to work here with the hue, saturation, and brightness because I can control these colors here a little bit more. So I know I want uh, mostly reds. I can just move both my highlight and shadow sliders to the reds. Um, and then if I want blues, pinks, you know, I can uh, do that here. So this works a lot better for me, but it's really going to be up to you how you like to work with color. And then of course, you know, that you can adjust your brightness and the saturation of the color as well. Here is one way that you can work with color. I'm going to show you in a little bit another way that I like to control the color. But here I think I'm going to go with um, blues and pinks. And I'm going to take out a lot of the black from the brightness and maybe uh, work up the saturation a little bit. So I can do that or I can just click right here on uh, randomize and then just keep clicking until I find something that I like so I can just you know keep on going here okay so I'm gonna go ahead and stick with these colors that I have and I'm gonna click OK now you'll see that I have this little cross cursor right here so what I'm gonna do is just hold the shift key and then take it um, somewhere toward the middle right here and then just drag it across I'm going to add a new layer on top of that and I'm going to do the exact same thing except this time I'm going the opposite direction. So I'm going to go from the top to the bottom holding the shift key to make sure that I get that as straight as possible. So I'm going to also show you how to adjust the color here, how to turn this into a repeating pattern and how to use it in a larger document. Uh, we'll go ahead and go through that but first let's go ahead and take a look at the coloring. So I'm going to click on layer 0 here and I'm coming down to my adjustments. I'm going to choose hue and saturation. I'm going to press this little icon down here to clip that to this layer just to make sure that that color is not applied just in case I move these layers um, that this color is only applied to that layer. And then I can come in and you know um, check out the different colors that I can get from what I have. I'm going to increase my saturation quite a bit and I think I, I like that right there so I'll go ahead and leave that there. Now I'm going to come up to layer one and I'm going to do the exact same thing up there. So I'm going to come to my adjustment layers, grab the hue and saturation, clip it into that layer and bring up my saturation and then just move this around I'll go ahead and leave it uh, right around there. So you can see how you can get um, different colors and different variations here so that you can make uh, multiple colors and just have different options for this. You could make yourself a set of uh, digital papers or a set of patterns that you can use over and over again just from these basic layers right here. 
Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna do is add a little bit of texture. So I'm just gonna grab that top layer. I'm gonna hold the shift key and I'm gonna grab the bottom layer just to select all of these right here. Now on my keyboard, I'm gonna click Shift, Option, Command, and the letter E. Again, that is Shift, Option, Command, and the letter E. That's gonna duplicate all of these layers into one flattened layer up here. So these layers we don't need anymore. I'm keeping them because I might use them later on to create different colors and different variations of this pattern. But for right now, we're gonna be working with this. I've selected layer number two. I'm gonna go ahead and double click right here on the far right hand side. I just wanna bring up my layer styles. We're gonna go ahead and add a pattern overlay to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here on pattern overlay. So our blend mode for this is gonna be overlay. We are at 100% opacity and the pattern that we're gonna be using is gonna be out of legacy patterns and more. I am working in Photoshop 2020. If you have not installed these, uh, then you're not gonna see this here. You might just see the trees, grass, and water here. So in order to load these in here, you're gonna need to come up to Window, Patterns, and your Patterns menu will come up. You'll see these three little lines right here. This is your hamburger menu, and you'll come down to Legacy, Patterns, and More. Just go ahead and click on that and that will load these patterns in so you can start using those. Okay, so we're gonna come back in here. We're gonna choose Legacy Patterns and More. Legacy Patterns. And inside here, we're gonna choose Artistic Brushes Canvas. We're gonna be using this one right here. It's the fourth one over. It's called Extra Heavy. So go ahead and click on that. And we're gonna adjust the scale of this. So we're gonna bring it down to about 15%. That's just gonna give us a um, kind of nice fuzzy texture, you know, like a soft feel that you see in, in like flannel and things like that. So you can do that. You can have this little, you know, like this softness to it. And I don't know that you can see that very well on the screen, but it does give a, a nice soft texture. You can bring that up as well. Um, just to get something more rough that's more like denim uh, style. I'm going to go ahead and leave mine at 15% and I'm going to click OK. So let me zoom in so you, hopefully you can see what that looks like. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is turn this into a, a repeating pattern. So originally I was going to show this to you as uh, like a cross pattern this way. But I feel like that it's really difficult to make a repeating pattern out of the diagonal like that. So I'm going to show you how to create it like this, and then I'll show you how I would add it to a larger document. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just rasterize this layer. So I'm going to come here and click on Rasterize Layer Style. And then I'm going to come up to Filter, Other, Offset. Remember, we're working with a 1000 by 1000 pixel document, so we're gonna just cut that in half. So we're doing horizontal 500, vertical 500. We are using wrap around, and we're gonna click OK. So we've just turned this into a repeating pattern, and it probably already was a repeating pattern, but this is just a good way to test that. Okay, once I have this, I'm gonna come up here to edit, define pattern, and I'll just call this uh, flannel. I'm going to click OK. And now I can use this pattern in a larger document. So we're going to come up here to File, New. And I'm going to use these settings right here, 3600 by 3600, 300 resolution. These are the dimensions you would use on a digital paper. We're going to use that. This is a 12 inch by 12 inch, by the way. So I'm going to go ahead and click Create. And then I'm gonna double click right here and add our pattern to this. So the pattern that we just created, this one right here. I'll go ahead and add that. Change this from overlay to normal so that we can see that pattern. And this is what it looks like. I have it scaled to 15%. Uh, We're gonna bring that up to 100%. And you can see that this is a repeating pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Create. Now I'm gonna zoom out a little bit because I want this pattern to be diagonal. So I'm gonna press the letter V on the keyboard. Okay, 
So I'm going to convert this to a smart object. If I don't, this pattern, when I uh, move this around, this pattern will not move. It's going to stay exactly where it is. So we don't want that. We want to move the entire pattern. So I'm going to right click, convert to smart object. And now what I'm going to do is uh, make this bigger and then turn it. I'm holding down the shift key. Okay, now I'm going to come here to the crop tool and crop it to the canvas. So I'm going to press return on the keyboard, return again to crop it. So now we have a, that, a diagonal version of that same thing. It has that nice soft uh, feel to it. And then from here, um, you'll just save this out as a JPEG file and it's ready to go. If you're interested in pattern making videos, I have an entire collection of uh, pattern making from scratch inside of Photoshop. If you're interested in that, I'll go ahead and leave a link up here and also in the description for that playlist. I also have some other fabric um, tutorials, cotton, linen, leathers, things like that in there. Make sure to check that out. If you like this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Visit prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching.